Welcome back my DIY nomads. I hope all of you guys are doing really, really well today. Currently with everything going on, I thought I would look into improving the skill to get conversions done rather than doing actual conversion stuff because we're just getting everything sorted for the unit. So today we're going to look at, do you remember the, the, um, the wood hook thing that I made for the van that is like triangles and you pull them out and you can hook stuff on it? I'm going to make a bigger version of that throughout this video but also I'm going to be throwing in a bunch of stuff that I've learned on how to cut wood tidily or just like what certain things on tools do. Um, because people that are coming into this blind, I still remember what that feels like. But really what I'm trying to do with a lot of this channel is to pass on my knowledge, pass on knowledge that I learn from other people as well. So that everyone just is better at stuff. Um, Knowledge is the key, and uh, yeah, let's let's get into this, and um, let's start building and sharing tips and hints. I also understand that I am not a trained carpenter. I am just a DIY enthusiast, so all the actual trained carpenters that are watching, please leave all of your knowledge that you're willing to leave below in the comments because it helps a lot. So this is what we've got so far. This is basically the piece that I'm looking to cut out, and this is gonna act as the wall. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use SketchUp and this is the, port, the center point of where the hole will hopefully be. And that's not the right one to move you. Right, now we've got the proper one selected. So basically this is going to rotate around this point and hopefully when it rotates 30 degrees, see it mashes up against the wall there. So that is our hook going around where the bolt will go through. So that's it in upwards position, that's it in downwards position right there. Now if I had a laser cutter, this would be very easy because I could just progress, program this in and cut them all out perfectly. But all I've got right now is this paper uh, template of it that I've measured out very accurately. Well, as accurately as I can do. And I'm gonna use that and there's the little dot for the center hole right there. Um, but that's what I've got to play with and I'm guessing what will happen have to do what I have to do is this edge here where it's it will be sharper. I will have to sand that off a little bit because it will rub. Um, but we'll see. I'm not going to do it until I actually need to. But that's the design, and uh, we're going to go create some jigs and go cut out a bunch of these to make a brand new coat rack hook thing with jig to the workshop. Well, it's less of my shed and more of just my miter saw on top of my workhorse, which is perfectly good what I've done is you can see there I've got two lines um, this is just the outline of the stencil that I drew up a second ago and I'm just going to cut a bunch of these to exactly the same length so I've pinned this bit of wood here so I can butt it up against it cut a bunch of pieces that are exactly the same length and uh, then we can start actually shaping these into well the sort of weird I guess rhombus is that the, word, the wrong word the, the, the different types of polygons that we need. Each of these is one and a half centimeters thick by two and a half centimeters wide by about 10 centimeters long. I've cut up two 2.4 meter lengths and we've got this massive long bar now, which is great. Much longer than the one we currently have in the van. 
what you might notice is these edges are very like frayed and that's because I didn't use any form of tape or anything like that but the reason I didn't do that was because these are all going to be angles anyway so this is basically going to be either sawn off um, or cut to a point so everything and I've, I've given it a little tiny bit of excess anyway so we've got some playing room so that's fine for the moment um, but what I will try and do is I will yeah try and cut off these sides rather than the the other sides that are a bit cleaner because then you know we're gonna have a better finish overall and this is where I love my saws guys um, I know that I've got a bandsaw but I don't have like any useful rigs like a jig sort of setups for it so the mitre saw is going to cut these really accurately all like very uniform throughout the whole set of them uh, and I'm going to start with a 25 degree angle I've got this bit of wood clamped down again all I have to do is push them up against the back wall and this bit of wood and uh, that should cut the perfect angle This is now where we are at. Oosk. What a beautiful lineup. I mean, these aren't straight from the top and the bottom, so, but you can see, like, even with the mitre saw, I'm not getting perfect cuts. So you can see that tiny bit of an angle. That's not a biggie at all. That's not a problem in the slightest. It's absolutely fine. So now, the mo most worrying part, and that is drilling the holes through all of these to then put my threaded bar through this is definitely like the most uh, important and, and critical part I think personally because if the holes don't line up um, they're all going to be like not lining up with each other they're going to be skewed if it's not going to screw to the wall properly it's all just going to be a bit of a palaver best thing to do is yeah build a rig that will allow you to drill at 90 degrees uh, whether that's made together out of like two by four. I actually saw a really cool video of a guy doing this. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, just this random YouTube video and you can build something like that really basic or you can buy one of those um, pillar drill style drill mounts. And you can mount your own power drill into them and use it like a pillar drill. That's gonna get much more closely to uh, the 90 degrees you want, but they're not perfect. Or you can, if you've got the budget, you can actually get yourself a proper pillar drill, which would be dreamy, but you know, as I said, if you can get one of those drill stands, they work just as well, I think, really. I mean, unless you're doing dumb level accuracy. So as I mentioned before, uh, this is one of those little pillar drill mounts. I've lost <laughs> in the move to this new house, our new house or whatever, I, have, I lost one of the handles. So uh, I have to deal with just two. But really, it's that's as basic it is. It's just a handheld power drill. I just had this cheapo job lying around um, you know that I had not really that I wasn't really using and it's just this basically this this bar with sort of a geared rack on it and um, yeah you just rotate the handle and it takes it down it's not perfect like when using it in the camera it probably won't come up very easily but when using it there is like wobble as it goes down so it's not perfect but it's it's a damn sight more accurate than just eyeballing it really um, unless you really are that good at eyeballing stuff, which would be incredibly impressive. On a whole nother step up, this is my sexy little um, mill. Um, please excuse the mess. This is literally, um, unfortunately, I don't know what images you guys had of me, but this is honestly how I work and it's terrible. I understand that. I'm just a very messy worker. Anyway, back to the mill. This is, oh, this is, I've, I've, I, 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 waited a long time to get this and so this is my prized possession at the moment but yeah this this will be very accurate incredibly accurate um, down to ridiculous tolerances and mainly used for working with metals i do occasionally use it for working with 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 woods so sorry if anyone takes that as sacrilege 
but this is what I will be mainly using. Plus I will be using that um, drill press just to show you how it works. I mean, it's very, very simple, but I will just show you how it all sets up and works and everything. One thing people always forget is that you can make your own tools, whether that's just a jig like what I've just made up here. I've just fabricated this. So from the side, I've got this piece of wood and I screwed it to this one and then I glued this another piece of wood on top that's cut with a sort of, I used a uh, right angle, like a square. Similar to something like that, you know what I mean. Um, to accurately make a 90 degree cut in this and I used my bandsaw to cut it out. Stuck it down and that means that now I lined it up so basically all I have to do is push the pieces in to this corner, into this corner here and I can use this clamp to hold it down if I want to. Um, but really, all I have to do is push it into this corner and all I have to do is keep going up and down and you can see the point goes oosh, bang right in there. And that is where we can drill. So we can now mass drill this very quickly. The principle is exactly the same for the pillar drill as well. You can just clamp a jig to it and because there's no other axes of movement, like this has got its like, um, oh no, I forgot what the, uh, the, the bench, the, yeah, that, that is, that doesn't exist on the, so you just clamp it in place make sure the drill point was in the center and you just keep going up and down up and down and with both even this mill and the pillar drill they sometimes come with um like point stops so you can stop it going down to a certain point so if you want to drill an, an exact depth into the wood and not go all the way through you can do that so you can set that before then set that point with the stop and then you just keep going down to that point and you can cut out like holes so yeah let's get mass screwing mass drilling no that's still just as bad uh let's just drill no let's just uh yeah yeah Right, boom, we have all the pieces done. Uh, I'm gonna put them onto the threaded bar in a second just to see how close we got. I've left, basically there's two end pieces, one of them's a hook and one of them's just like a the normal solid block. I'm leaving those untouched for the moment, but I'm leaving the mill, but I'm leaving the mill in its exact position because these are gonna be the end pieces. So I'm thinking that what I'm gonna do with the other one, like with the other one is drill out a bigger drill hole, then drill the, eight mil straight through anyway so that I can like hide the nut and bolt like the nut ends inside the wood so they're not like on the side they're actually inside the wood so that it looks neater boom look at that that is some sexy looking racks wait no that's a really nice angle for it to come out yet as well So we've got some really rough edges here. I do need to sand them down, obviously. Right, we're back in the workshop. And what I've done is I've put a nut and some washers on either side. And I've tightened this up a lot and made sure they're all flat. Put it on my dining table and like made sure they're all flat to the surface. So they're as close as can be to being um, all lined up. Now what I'm gonna do is, because they have like these rough edges, I don't really want a very sharp point. So I'm gonna use my bandsaw and I'm gonna very slowly just cut about two or three mil off the height of the whole thing here. This means that it'll get rid of most, of, like it'll get rid of the rough cut from the mitre saw, it'll get rid of these horrible jaggedy edges, and it'll give the top of the points like a little flat square off, which should be nicer anyway, all round. <laughs> There we go. 
So you've got this like squared off edge on the top now. So it's much nicer. It's not like a pointy edge that could potentially develop splinters. It's also not going to like really cut into the clothes and everything's been sanded. Just sanded the front so it's really nice and soft to the touch. So now we're going to try my cheapo like 35, 40 quid drill press with this random drill I just had lying around. What I've done is I used the um, mill with the point of the drill bit just to punch a hole where it needs to go. And I'm just going to use this 16 mil um, wood hole drill bit, hole saw bit, not hole saw, oh god, I'm so bad with terminology, uh, this drill bit anyway, to make a not all the way through, just a hole deep enough for the nut, uh, and then I'm going to do the same with this other piece. I was going to use the other triangular piece, but I actually like preferred obviously the having two end pieces like this. Um, so I'm going to do it to this one, and we'll just have to take it slower because the hole's already drawn in that one. So the only difference between obviously, well, the reason why my mill's so accurate is if you watch the drill bit, can you see it move there just at the end? See, so let it keep. If I keep bringing it up and down. That first one, it was off. It is seeming to go back into this hole now, but it does slightly meand like meander a little bit. And that's why I prefer to use my other mill. But this is it, clamped down, ready to go. We're ready to drill. So this drill is particularly loud. So I'm going to uh, have my ear protection on for this one. bar has been cut to length now for the moment of truth oh damn it it was meant to work out so well this is a lot tricky oh here we go there it is there it is now the hard bit is tightening that up oh god oh well that that seems to be working as a tightening point as it is. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> Great. So I actually tried to end up cutting it a bit short anyway, but that is genuinely how much excess I managed to get out of it before I got to the point where the hooks come out with a really nice sort of pressure. So I'm going to have to hack that off anyway. There she be, ladies and gents. The only thing I need to do is trim off this little bit at the top here, but that is a finished piece, ready to go, ready to be mounted. You guys enjoyed this little revisit that we did um really chuffed with the results it looks so good uh, i'm worried that it's going to make my other smaller one in the van look really bad because i didn't really have uh the skills and or tools to pull it off as accurately as i did that one but it doesn't matter because that just shows my progress and i'm really chuffed to sort of see that um, so that will be added to the van very soon and remember if you're liking these videos please subscribe uh, unit is going to be fantastically we're nearly at the point of getting all the paperwork done so excited we just then need to wait a couple of weeks for the unit to actually be finished and then we can move in oh um i don't i don't have a i don't have a moving in date yet but i will update you when i do really exciting and merch i will be updating on merch as well so i'll catch all of you diy nomads next week <laughs>